protests. This evening, the State Department called on the Bahraini government to reverse its decision to dissolve the main opposition groups. Since the anti-government demonstrations began in February, at least three prisoners have died in police custody. More than 30 people have been killed and over 400 detained. The country is now under martial law, but our security correspondent, Frank Gardner, who used to live there, was able to get around the country, and he's just brought back this report. You may find some of the images upsetting. In a Shiite suburb of Manama, a body arrives from the morgue. <laughs> Ali Isa al Sagar had handed himself over to police. Six days later, he died in their custody. They say he fought his jailers. His family are seeing his battered body for the first time. His wounds are shocking. The deaths of this and other detainees are in flaming parts of the Shiite community. The people behind me are actually shouting, down with Hamid, down with the king. This is a very politicized funeral. They're calling the man who died in police custody a martyr. The man they're burying was accused of trying to kill a policeman at Bahrain's Pearl Roundabout. But should that excuse his apparent torture? I put this case to the health minister. She said the wounds had been photoshopped by the opposition to make them look worse, until I told her we'd seen them ourselves. You've seen it yourself, I've seen it. personally? Yes. You went personally. to the morgue? I went, You've seen her? I went to um, Sahla and Shimaliya yesterday to the funeral. I've seen, we've seen the body. Mm -hmm. it, it was absolutely shocking. I will, I will uh, try as, uh, you know, as a, a person, also a minister in charge of human rights, that we will ask for an investigation for this. Bahrain, the smallest Arab state, has seen the biggest clashes in the Gulf. Over 30 reported killed this year. It's polarized the country, driving a wedge between the ruling Sunni minority and the huge underemployed Shiite community that feels victimized. Neighboring Saudi Arabia said the clashes must stop. Last month, Saudi and other Gulf forces poured into Bahrain, a warning to Iran not to meddle. Bahrain is now under martial law. Checkpoints have sprung up all over the country and there's a curfew. Cameras record every number plate round the clock. To many Shiites, this is intimidating. Yet most Sunnis and expatriates find it reassuring after the chaos of protesters' roadblocks. At Friday prayers at the Sunni mosque, we found a community largely supportive of the government's crackdown. Worshippers told me they welcomed the Saudi troops that Iran and many Shiites see as invaders. They felt the protesters had gone too far. You see, when, when those people came at the roundabout at the first week, we were all with, with them because we had the same problems, you know, or claims. But when they have left, you know, their line and they were trying to, you know, to, to, to take things by force and when they were beating people, you know, blocking the roads, uh, not allowing people to, to, uh, to go to their work, uh, invading the, you know, the hospital, the, 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 most biggest, the biggest medical center, we blame this destruction. In this Sunni-dominated part of Bahrain, we found this uncompromising poster. No pardon, it reads. We demand the maximum penalty for the anarchists. The government made them take it down, but it went back up again. At home with his grandchildren, we found the spiritual leader of Bahrain's sizable Sunni minority. I asked him what he thought would happen if protesters from the Shiite majority ever deposed the Sunni ruling family here. Yes, if they, uh, if they manage to, uh, to seize power, uh, Sunnis in Bahrain will suffer and uh, killing will, will see bloodshed and killing in Bahrain. The same group here in Bahrain, they're taking their instructions, orders from Iran, Iraq and Hezbollah. I telephoned the family of one Shiite activist accused of this. His daughter denied any links with the Iranian government, but admitted he did want the overthrow of the ruling family. She said masked men beat him in front of her.
dragged him down one flight of stairs, and then in the middle of the stairs, they put him on the ground. One of them had his hand on my father's neck, while like four others started beating him and stepping on him and kicking him. With confidence in Bahrain's stability badly shaken, many people here blame the protesters, calling them traitors. They and the government feel the international media has only reported one side of the story, the opposition's version. Well, this is the main newspaper here in Bahrain. It's called Akhbar al-Khalij, News of the Gulf. It's pro-government orientated. And on the back is a pretty shocking cartoon showing apparently a BBC microphone spitting out venom. And it says in Arabic, Samum al-BBC, poisons of the BBC, which shows you how angry the government is with all the international media for what they consider to be its one-sided coverage of the violence here in Bahrain. The opposition certainly make themselves more available than the government. In the cool of the evening, I met a Shiite MP from the main opposition bloc, al Wafaq. His views implied the ruling family are going against the grain of history. Our problem, it is not with the Sunnis here in Bahrain. Our problem, it is not with the ruling families in the Gulf, the GGC country. Our problem is not the fear of the United States from any uh, influence of Iran and Bahrain. Our problem with the uh, ruling family, uh, if they, they want to accept to give part of their power and the authority to the people or no. The absence of, of the willingness is the problem. Not true, says the government. The Crown Prince offered them a power-sharing deal, and they hesitated to take it. But when I finally got this government interview, I raised the matter of Bahrain's worsening human rights record. We want to ensure that anybody that's been detained uh, is uh, provided uh, all his rights according to the laws of the country. We have to ensure that law and order is restored. and. Uh, we have to review the whole operations methods, I think, from the beginning of the events so that uh, we better understand how we got here and uh, if there is any injusti uh, injusti unjustified methods, then uh, uh, people will be held accountable. This peaceful scene is deceptive. The regime's hardliners have got their security clamped down. The reformers have been sidelined and there's a pretense that things are going back to normal. For now, the lid has been put back on the boiling pot, but the brutal way it's being done is like stoking the fire beneath it. Frank Gardner reporting there from Bahrain. Let's have a look at tomorrow morning's front pages. Uh, Time has uh, pictures of uh, Obama, Cameron and Sarkozy. The United Front, leaders pledge we fight on until Gaddafi goes. It's an article for...